Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by an Emmy Award winning actor. You might know him from How to Get Away with Murder, The Have and the Have Nots, and other projects. He has a single out, The Soulful, Keep Me in Mind, Rome Flynn. Welcome. Thank you for having me on. What's going on? Let's go. Let's do it. Let's go beyond the mic. Let's do it. Tell us how your life was changed by becoming a dad. It changed everything. You know, it changed my perspective on relationships, changed my drive, you know, my ambition. When I, my daughter, before she was born, when I found out that she was coming, I didn't have a job. I didn't have anything. I didn't have a dollar to my name. So it just kind of forced me to either sink or swim forced me to be great. Now, is there a certain lullaby you sing your daughter? I do, sometimes. I play piano for her. You know, I play guitar for her, I sing for her. She gets annoyed by me singing, though. She's like, she's like over it. <laughs> she's like, that's enough, Dad. She's hurting me, but I'm, I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to keep ignoring her. I'm going to keep annoying her, you know? <laughs> I know. As a, as a dad, it's very important to annoy your daughter. Now, you came to live in Los Angeles with a hope, a dream, and a couple bags of stuff. If you could have told yourself something back in those early L.A. days, what would it have been? You know, I, I, don't, I don't think I would have said anything, honestly. I think everything that I went through being here early on, it really groomed me to, to have the work ethic that I have. I think that if I would have told myself that everything was going to be okay, I wonder if I would have worked as hard, you know, or, or done the extra stuff, like stayed up late, just, you know, sending emails or, you know, just doing the extracurricular stuff that I felt like I needed to do in order to be successful. Um, I would have let things play out exactly how they did. You came and saw L.A. Yeah. with dreams and hopes, and now you're there. How has that changed? You know, honestly, the, the hunger and the fight of wanting to be great is still there. I feel like I appreciate the accomplishments that I have been able to, to do, but I definitely don't feel like I've arrived or I've made it. You know, I've done a lot of amazing things, you know, but... I'm still that guy who came here wanting to get a get a job and wanted to do great things and still feel the same way. Um, I guess just now I'm a, a lot more calculated and a lot more you know specific about what kind of jobs I want to do to accomplish that. On Twitter a couple of years ago, you posted, quote, live up to expectation, yeah. unquote. What are your expectations now? I had a lot of goal-oriented expectations, I think, Maybe a year ago, two years ago, I still I still have those, but I think I'm more focused on individual prosperity. You know, I, I'm really trying to focus on being happy, and I think that I, I didn't really know what that meant. I was happy working, but I, but I realized during the pandemic that the fact that I'm happy solely based on if I'm busy or not really isn't happiness at all. So I've been trying to figure out what that is for me. My expectations for myself is to to push the the limit, you know, push the barrier the stigmas, all of that, you know, I, I love going against the grain, you know, I love proving people wrong, but you know, I've been trying to go on this personal pursuit to try to figure out what makes me happy. How has your time working with Tyler Perry changed the way you view yourself as an actor? It impacted me a lot artistically and personally, you know, he was somebody that just kind of took me under his wing. I never really like, you know, forced my way into having a friendship with him or anything. He just invited me in into the fold and, and he showed me different ways that visually that I could be successful, you know, and to see the, where he came from and to see where he is now, uh, you know, it just inspired me a lot. But as an actor, you know, working with him, I did a lot for that show when I was on uh, Have and Have Not. And so being on that show, it was a collaborative thing with me and Tyler. So after I was done filming there, I felt like I could work with anybody. You know, I did a lot of work, uh, writing for that show when I was there for my character. He allowed me to do that. So I had to, to work up the nerve every day to bring these ideas to him. And sometimes he would shoot him down or, or sometimes he'd say, that's funny as hell, let's keep that. But it really just groomed me to, to be able to, to pay attention to my instincts and to act on them and not to be, not be so shy about it. Now, I've got five siblings. Where are you in the pecking order of your family? There's eight of us total from my mom and dad. I am actually second oldest. So my sister's older than me, and then there's me. I'm the, I'm the first oldest boy, and then we have, you know, the rest of my siblings after that. I think the youngest sibling that I have is is in like sixth grade, maybe. How has your family supported you during your acting rise? They've been with me every step of the way. They've been my hugest supporters. You know, my mom she always says she's my biggest fan, and she has, you know. But now I get on her sometimes 
she'll miss episodes. And I'm like, I remember you, you wouldn't miss no, you wouldn't miss any episodes now. But, you know, she, she owns a restaurant, so she, a lot that she's still dealing with. You know, my siblings are still living in the house with her, my younger siblings. So I don't give her too hard of a time. But, you know, they, they've been supporting me more than anybody else since the first project that I ever did. You know, they just kept telling me to keep going and, and that they were proud of me. I just wanted to do things that they could watch and that they could be proud of, you know? Exactly. When you got your first series paycheck, what did you buy your mom? I, I've been, <laughs> I, she's been asking me for this bed set, man. That's nice. She, she had just been hinting to me about it. Like, she didn't ask specifically, like, can you get me this? She would just say, this is the bed set I want. And she just kept bringing it up. And I'm like, okay, well, that's clearly what you want. <laughs> so I got her a brand new bed. And then, you know, this Mother's Day came around and she did this thing. And I'm like, you want another bed set? You know, and she's like, well, these have dressers and stuff. She just like, you know, she's really cool about the stuff that she wants. She never really asks for, for anything. I have to like pull it out of her most times. Isn't that how moms are? We're joined on the star line by the Emmy Award winning actor from How to Get Away with Murder, Rome Flynn. Your love of basketball was evident. A hand injury kept you from being recruited, but you worked your ass off to get a college basketball scholarship. Yeah, I did. Uh, when I was in high school, I fractured my metal carpal bone in my left hand when I was a senior. And um, I wasn't very good at that time, but I had gotten better. And I had colleges looking at me. And, you know, once I injured myself, I wasn't good enough for a college to stick around. But I had an amazing work ethic, man. I just, I went to the gym even though my hand was broke. You know, and I worked out every day and I, and I ran with the team every day. And I kind of worked my way into a scholarship at St. Benedictine University. Um, I just started showing up to the practices. I started showing up to the open gyms and no one knew who I was. And the coach didn't know where I came from. He asked me, you know, the first couple of times, like, who do you know here? How do you know about this? And I just, I made her name. I said, you know, one of the guys from the, you know, and I just made someone up and he was like, oh, okay. And so that's kind of how I got into into the gym, but then I just kind of worked my way into getting a scholarship, and he ended up just asking me to, to join the team, and we ended up being pretty close before I ended up leaving. Now, with your acting career growing each day, do you miss playing basketball with your simply the best basketball team, the Ironborn? I mean, come on, you're averaging 32 and 8? Eight, eight boards? That ain't bad at all. Yeah, man, yeah. I, I still play. I still play a lot, or I was before everything happened, but yeah, I, I definitely miss, I miss it. The camaraderie is what you can't really, you know, duplicate it anywhere. It's like a brotherhood, you know, if you play basketball, it's, it's one of those unifiers, you know, sports is a unifying thing where you don't even need to know anybody's background or where they're from or what they do for a living. You know, everybody kind of understands it. So, yeah, I definitely miss it, man. You know, I definitely ain't a scrub. Hopefully next year when we have an all-star game, I can play in it. Okay. You could play a pickup game of three-on-three. Three. Who are the two players on your team and who are you facing? So, you know, I would, uh, if we speaking like in anybody ever, you know, in the basketball world. Anybody. You can play with Jordan if you wanted to. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I want to, I probably, you know, I want to play with LeBron, honestly. Um, I love Jordan, but I'm a LeBron guy, man. So I would say me, LeBron, you know, and Shaq, man. I think that, that you know, that, that Lakers Shaq, when he was with Kobe, would be cool. Or me, LeBron, and Kobe versus, you know, Mike. Scotty and Kenny Hardaway is another guy I feel like is underrated. I feel like that would be a crazy matchup. But actually, I got to get somebody shorter for me. So Isaiah Thomas, we'll do Isaiah Thomas. I think he, you know, we probably match in height right now, so we can do that. We're joined on the star line by Emmy award-winning actor. His latest single, "Keep Me in Mind," is a soulful reminder that relationships they just aren't easy. Yeah, my, my influence on that record was I feel like we, you know, in, in relationships. When you're with somebody, it gets hard, you know, it gets rocky and we start to fall into this idea of that we need to stay in the relationship if we're not getting treated well. You know, we get familiar with being treated poorly in the song. I just wanted to tell a story about about how you don't really need to stay in those kind of things that, that there's more after that, you know. So I just say keep me in mind when you're going through the things. Me as in not me personally, but just keep that person in mind that comes to mind when you hear this song, you know? Exactly. Are you still considering naming your EP Energy? Yeah, so initially, you know, I was going to name my EP Energy at the time. I'm not sure exactly if I still will or not, but I think Energy is one of those things that can't be destroyed. You know, Energy is 
is all around us. It can only be transferred. So I think it kind of resembles for me how even bad things kind of end up being good for you at some point, you know? And even with this song, I just wanted to talk about relationships and kind of how I see them in my own kind of personal perspective. Now, which is harder, acting or recording in a studio? Definitely acting. Recording in a studio can be difficult because you get writer's block thing, but it's a more intimate thing. That part of it isn't as hard. The acting part of it can be quite challenging, depending on what you're doing. You know, if you have an emotional scene or you're, you're working alongside Viola Davis, you're, you're prepared and, and ready for your scene. There's a lot of things that go into shooting a show or a movie as it, as it relates to I mean, as it doing a record. It's just you and the producer or engineer. Would you consider your music a release for you? It's been really good, um, honestly. To it, It's like giving me a voice to, to say things that I feel like I think all the time. And so in music, you get to speak your truth. And I've been trying to make sure I do that with music. Uh, it's a more vulnerable space to be in. I think normally I'm, I'm kind of covered by the mysteriousness of the character that I'm playing on television or movies. But music is, is like an intimate thing where you experience with a mass group of people. So it, it's a different kind of pressure that comes along with that. What's your favorite guitar to play? My favorite guitar is electric guitar. You know, maybe like a Les Paul, or I really like playing vintage guitars, though. I like the, the makeup of the guitars that they used to make back then. They don't, they don't really make them like that now, you know, with the older pickups that are in them. So I like electric guitar. I like, I like acoustic guitars, too, like a, like a Taylor or something with a really fresh sound, you know. You can't really duplicate a, an acoustic guitar when it has fresh strings on it. So I get excited about that kind of thing. Do you remember your first musical recital? Yeah, my first ever music recital. So I remember I, the first thing I did, I, I was in school. I was, uh, I was young. It was like middle school, I think. Yeah, I was in middle school. My first guy introduced to doing music in any form was I played the drums, which is kind of funny. The reason I ended up playing the drums in middle school is because I saw a drum line and I saw Nick Cannon. And I thought, man, that dude was cool, man. I want to play drums too. And so I joined the band like days later. And it's just funny, coincidentally, that I end up being in the sequel for that movie. Time's running out, so it's time for the Rocking Eight. Eight random questions Answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. No pressure. All right, let's do it. Who is the actor, actress, or director that you would act for free just to work with them? Uh, Jordan Peele. If you could return to any TV series you did a one-off episode for, which series would you like to do again? Ozark. Best place to get food from your hometown in Chicago? Uncle Remus, which is a, a chicken place. Favorite place to get away from it all? Basketball court. Gotta ask, favorite cheat day meal? I love pizza, man. What kind? Pepperoni. Pepperoni's nice, yeah. Pepperoni, man, that's my favorite. Nickname your siblings have for you? Well, my mother gave me my nickname, and I never told anybody this, okay? I'm only going to tell you, all right? So my nickname growing up was Dula Bug, D-U-L-A. And I have no idea why she called me that, but she still does to this day. Now, you've been a super workout king during the quarantine period. What's your current quarantine workout? I've been running a lot. Like, I've been running on my roof a lot because I want to just be outside, but I don't want to be outside, you know? So I've been running on my roof and then also doing, like, 50 or 200 push-ups a day and then, like, 60 to 100 have workouts a day. I feel like kind of to keep me in a, you know, a good state. And which musical artist influenced your love of music? Uh, Marvin Gaye and Teddy Pendergrass. He loves pepperoni pizza, wants to return to Ozark, and his EP is coming soon. The single, Keep Me In Mind, is out now. Rum Flynn, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you for having me, man. And that, my friends, is Beyond the Mic. <laughs>